Man, big spiders these days. <sighs> Glad the dog ran that one off. Uh, this week, I wanted to do uh, the blade sharpening. And the number one thing first is to how to remove this blade from a 12 inch, it's an older style Ryobi, but some of the principles still apply and there's a really important problem here. So I wanted to show that to you. You'll need two things. You'll need some sort of a, in this case, I'm using a half inch socket with a extendable uh, wrench and you'll need a Phillips screwdriver. The other trick that I like to use is usually a block of wood or something to get this thing out of my way. So what I'll do here is I'll just uh, raise this up and usually stick a block of wood or something up in it. Just, just something to hold it up out of the way so, it's, so it stays up here. It'll be easier actually here in a second. The first thing we want to do is get the Phillips screwdriver and there's a little Phillips screw right here. We're going to unlock just this one screw. I've seen different uh, videos that said they had to take uh, all this apart or something and once you back that screw off far enough, this whole feature will go back and then get your block of wood or a piece of scrap lumber or something up in there just to sort of hold it out of your way. That exposes the nut. Now, there's the big important thing you got to know. This is what they call a left hand thread. So you really need to uh, be aware of that because otherwise you'll turn the wrong way. Now on the back side of the motor, there is a lock button. And I'm just going to show that to you. Now that's the lock button on the back side of the saw and that has to be depressed in order to lock into the motor. So we're going to lock that button down and you'll, you'll have to run the blade around a little bit while you push on it until you find the lock because there it goes. There's only a few places where it's going to lock so what I'm going to do is now this would normally be tightening and instead we're actually loosening the bolt because it is like I said this is a left hand thread so you're going to turn it backwards well you can release the lock oh uh, I guess I should mention uh, always make sure the saw is uh, unplugged of course before you uh, get into all this yeah. <sighs> almost forgot and take your pieces off that's going to expose a blade with an arbor. Again, we're talking about arbor sizes. <laughs> Seems like that comes up all the time. This is a 7 8 arbor size, as opposed to a 5 8 on a 10 inch for like a circular saw or the new 30 millimeter that I ran into the other oh, weeks ago. Anyways, this is the blade. This particular blade, we're going to sharpen it, but I wanted to explain a couple things about it. This is a, uh, a sort of like a cabinet or very fine blade. It's obviously 80 teeth and it's what we call you know, I guess in the business a very a straight cut there's no angles to these blades these blades are straight this way there's there's a piece of carbide of course at, e, at, e, at each tip but they're straight there's no uh, funky angles they're not like a, a sawtooth blade or something like that it gives a really nice cut it's a little sluggish a little slower to go through lumber with it but it cuts really well and it cuts really straight so there's very minimal sanding to do once you cut. The uh, downsides are, are just probably the slow cut. I, I really don't know what anything else that is a problem with these. Uh, they're generally used you know like more for fine work or whatever but I really like them because they've always given me a really good cut so I use them on both of my uh, big 12 inch saws. So now we're gonna go to the uh, we'll go to the new sharpener and we'll uh, just touch this uh, touch this up a little bit so we just did this last week uh, set this up sort of showed you guys what it looked like so i'm going to put the blade in here and i'll show you how to how this is going to sharpen take this out of here uh, first thing of course is the we're going to be looking for the blade this way not this way the this, this angle at least this part has to go straight up to this little uh, stone so we're going to make absolutely sure that's that's where we're at and remember cone cone spring 
flat washer and the little knob. And I'm just going to tighten it down a little bit. Like I said, this is doesn't have to have a lot of spring pressure back here, but ideally you do want to hold the blade, you know, in the center. So it's got to be, I really don't know how else to describe the, the pressure here. Uh, this is, you know, not super stable, but this rest under here is what's really holding the blade in place while you, uh, while you do it. So now what we're going to do is going to bring this, actually, just a second here, show you this. I uh, marked the, the start. So I've got a little mark right here, so I know this is the very first blade that I'm going to be sharpening with this. Now when I do this, I've knocked this out of the way a bit because this is an 80 tooth, so it's quite a lot of, uh, you know, change it, change it, change it. So what I'm doing with this particular uh, setup is I'm going to be uh, bringing, the, bringing it in. It's set so it won't come to the bottom, so it just hits the, this, this, this face here is only hitting the carbide you know, tooth. So when I bring it in, I'm going to just put a little pressure this way, ease the pressure off, open it, come back in, get the next one, get the next one, you know, this sort of thing. And just touching them a little bit because really that's all we need to do. Okay, I've gone all the way around uh, just one time because I really gave each one of these teeth a really good uh, you know, nasty pass kind of thing and then uh, stop the machine. And now we can unload the blade and put her back in the saw and test her up and see how she does. This blade, by the way, was virtually smoking when it was going down through a 2x4. Uh, pine, soft pine 2x4, and she was smoking. The, uh, the soft wood like that this blade should just walk through that like butter. So it was quite obvious that it needed some sharpening. Now, as far as obvious on the machine here, I didn't really see, I saw a lot of sparks flying. I got a lot of uh, dust flying around, but uh, the saw blade, we've gone once around and you can see the shiny on all the blades now. They all have a nice shiny look to them to where, the, uh, where I did them. So, hey, let's try this out. And we're back at the saw. The same thing applies when we're putting it on, but the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is get the blade uh, back up on the saw. And again, make sure it's not plugged in. Uh -huh. And you want the blades to be pulling material this way, towards the back of the saw. So look at the direction of your teeth, just to make sure you're, you're putting it on the right way. <laughs> no sense in having an accident. This is supposed to be a fun hobby, not a, you know, get hurt hobby. Now, because this is left-hand thread, I have to turn it like I'm going to try to take it off and it's going to actually get tighter and tighter because again like I said it's the reverse. Now I'm going to depress the uh, button back here on the motor that I showed you earlier and now we're going to what feels like we're trying to unload the bolt is actually going to let's see if I can get that there we go it's going to feel like we're you know unscrewing this thing and it's really backward. I don't know, these left-hand threads really throw me. Uh, as far as torque or whatever goes, I just, you know, I'm pretty snug there. Uh, anything more than that, I think would be unnecessary. Take our block of wood out. Uh, I'm gonna try to bring this guy down with our fingers. There we go. And I'm just holding the plastic on an angle, pushing. So I'm holding the whole thing down while I tighten this screw back up. So changing the blade on this saw is actually really a breeze. Uh, just that left hand thread thing, man, you gotta know that or you will get yourself in a lot of, a heap of trouble. Now I'm gonna check and make sure it comes down. Stops good, right on. Now, a uh, test piece of lumber. We need a piece of scrap lumber. I guess to check the blade and just see how it did. This is a hard uh, piece of uh, old dried out lumber, but I guess that'll be a good, a good trial. Oh, I'm going to say wow. That's about the only thing I could think of. But wow, yeah. That is amazing. And again, I'll show you up close, but uh, try to get focus, focus. Uh, probably not, but the it's really, really, really smooth. I mean, there's virtually, you can't see any uh, edges in here. There's really no marks from the blade going through this lumber. 
but that's an 80 tooth blade so and it's just what they call a straight cut in other words it's not the the teeth aren't like this they're not you know sticking out on both sides and jaggedy so you get this really super smooth cup it cuts slower although right now it just went through this thing like it was absolutely uh not there wow and i had almost no uh, hand pressure to pull the saw down into it so i wasn't pushing it through or something uh, in the past few uh, actually the last few years i've noticed the saw's performance has been really poor that's like a brand new blade or something right now that is amazing how easily that went through that is fabulous we need a wood project now so we can cut some more wood <laughs> but wow i'll tell you i think uh i think the harbor freight thing was actually a pretty good buy over there Wow.